iceberg right ahead. Uncut Angling is getting a government grant for having a visible minority on this show. So I don't want to disappoint the uncut viewers. We may not catch a fish and I don't think if you guys watch it, it makes a difference because it is government funding for a visible minority. So I'm Paul Castellano, I'm here with Terrell Murata. We're on the Niagara River. It took us close to four hours to chisel that ramp, clean the snow, get the boat ready, get the boat in the water, only to be faced with floating ice. But you know what? It is what it is, so let's handle our biz. You know what I'm saying? So here's how simple the setup is. We're using a three-way swivel, 10 pound to my reel, six pound fluorocarbon right to the hook, dropper, we're using three quarter ounce, and on the business end, we're just using a small little corky. This is a size 12 egg sack hooks, real light wire. This will allow the minnow to swim freely. And the point of this corky, there's two things, color attraction, and just to help give the minnow a little bit of lift. Come on, come on right up, we'll get right up here. And then we'll just tack into the current and use the trolling motor just to kind of What's slow tacking? us down. Tacking, just little shots of, from the trolling motor to slow us down. Why don't you say little shots instead of tacking? I did. Like tacking shouldn't be ever talked about. It should just be oh, little shots. Oh, okay. Little shots. Tacking is like too technical. That's right. When I hear people talk about tacking, it sounds like they're really professional. They really know what they're doing. But what does it mean? I don't know. It's pretty cool. You see how the ice is all bouncing off that point? It's all staying to that side with the west wind. So that was crazy out there. There was way too much ice. We couldn't fish. So this little pocket, it's ice free. This is beautiful. In a perfect world, we'd actually catch a fish. A fishing show original. You put two guys in a boat fishing and you call each other bud. <laughs> bud. <laughs> When I just got bit here, our cameraman, not mentioning any names, was doing a vine. Big error. I might have to fire him after this. And yes, I did hook this fish on my own, even though we didn't catch the hook. Okay, set. okay, quit screwing around. Put, okay. put that put that cork lower in your body. And get your tip higher than your reel. There you go. Good, good, good. Guiding. I'm on vacation. Yay. What is it? Brown Town. Oh yeah, my favorite. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. Yeah, Pulls buddy. out the impossible yeah, on a bud. day like this. Yeah, bud. That's beautiful, how you do beautiful it. brown trout. Check out the colors. The water's been dirty, so the fish are a little bit pale. This is a male brown. I'm gonna keep it out of the water Check just the for colors. a second. The skunk is out of the boat. First fish is so key. Would you not agree, Mr. P? Every bite is a message. And once you get that first bite, you know, it tells you a lot. And you just gotta look at why you got that bite and keep doing it over and over again until it stops working, you know? How deep were you when you caught that? Do you remember? 17, I thought. 14.3. Yeah, was it? That was a test. Was it? Yeah, that was a test. It was all my so on these big, these big flats. These that was a big, test. Big, I failed. Big, big giant flats, right? You just try to pay attention because it all looks the same here. It's not like we're fishing behind one rock. These trout typically will school up, or they'll use the same area for whatever reason it may be. So the first clue we got: fishing slower water because the water is cold. It's only 32 degrees, and two, what depth? So try to replicate it. Next time, I'll pay attention, Paul. You want to pick up that weight a little bit, T? Too much dragging? If you're going to drag, try to keep your pencil weight on that three-way dropper. Try to keep it standing up so just the base of that is ticking, not like you're 10 feet past. Try to keep it as vertical as possible mm -hmm. and then just little shots with the trolling water to stay on top of your line. I think that's bullshit, too. Every situation is different. Yeah. When's the last time you fished this drift? Yeah, but I fished like When's this. the last time you fished this drift? Uh, exactly. 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 This guy's cocky. You know, basically, I just traced the bottom. The rod tip is super soft. That's a really key component with this too. If your rod is too stiff and too short, the fish feels it, drops it. This will actually, by doing this technique and getting in the rhythm of touching and lifting, as you go to lift up, a lot of times, that's when you feel the bite. You'll go to pick it up, the rod will start to load, the fish has no clue that he's about to get hooked, and bang. There's so much ice here. Two guys in a boat. We're gonna try our best. We're gonna make this happen. Let's see what happens. We're gonna adjust. Major system coming through. And by both of us being up here, right by the trolling motor, if we have to make adjustments to get around these ice flows to the left, to the right, I'm able to see where his line is, I'm able to see where my line is, and it's a huge advantage today. Really clear and concise. I gotta go to your school. P2, Professor Paul. P2, kicks the truth to the young black youth. Right? Have you ever had a black guy on your boat? Yeah, Jamaicans. Sure? <laughs> yeah, Jamaicans. I think he's the racist. He's the only <laughs> one that's talking about it. You don't like white people. Hey, I got a color TV. I'm not racist. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, oh, run. Oh yeah. That's it, man. I can't believe how light that bite was. If you're not hovering that weight, I would never have felt that bite. That's Ooh, a better nice fish. fish. Nice fish. Heads up, heads up, coming through. That is the best part about this boat. The layout and design, this open concept, impossible to do that. If the boat had a console or if there's a bunch of clutter in the way, that is amazing. 
That's a good fish, buddy. Got it. Nice. We own it. <laughs> Do not keep the fish under the water any longer than necessary. You don't want to hurt them. You don't want their eyes freezing. You don't want their gills freezing. That is a quality fish right there. If you come out here or any type of trout fishing you're doing, really doesn't matter if you're using bait casting, quipping, or spinning, but this is a nine foot slow action. But the key is that these rods have no power until they're under full load. So that fish is able to pick up the bait. I'm able to detect the bite in the rod tip and the long soft rod helps protect those light leaders and keep the small sticky hook in place. That was so light. Forget it. If that was me, I probably had 50 of those. So forget it. That was so light. I want to try a couple different colors of the corky. So if that one doesn't get you anything on this pass, you know, maybe we'll change the color up. Okay. How could I come up with cast adventures and I can't even cast? I'm just holding a rod here in my hand with two guys in a boat. That's nice, Terrell. It's nice. Make it look boring. I really, I really, I really appreciate that. <laughs> just teasing. You know? It's teasing, you know? Don't touch me. <laughs> we like to party. Fish, 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 fish. What nice. Here we go. Wailed it. Again, that soft rod was key for this. On the roll bag. I like to keep the tip always higher than the reel. I plant the cork onto my forearm. And coming at you. Keep it in the water. Nice job. So we've been trying different things. Primary forage is either some type of minnow or eggs. Tara's trying minnows, I'm trying roll bags. When it's really tough and you're faced with conditions like we have here, don't be afraid to mix things up. Even if something's working, I highly recommend that you change up either the color or change up the presentation. So these fish are super tricky to hold on to, so there's no shame in using a tailing glove. I know for a lot of species you don't, but I think it's a lot better to have a proper grip on the fish than to drop the fish. And as a result of that, hurt the fish, because we're going to let them go. Taro's going to pop that hook out if you can. Good man. We'll take it. We're grinding. We're working. There really isn't a pattern other than just keep changing things you're using. Two guys in a boat catching beautiful fish. Woo! What he said. Okay, so this fish hit the trout bead. The line did break off from the net. I had a roll bag on the top hook, and these are brown trout eggs, loose brown trout eggs. I just lightly hooked this on. One, two, three, I'm just going through the mesh, and my hook broke off, so I put the bead on the line. There's tons of colors that are good. They come in different sizes. The size that seems to be best today is we're using one that's a 10 mil, and the chartreuse with that pink bag. These here are just little silicone stoppers. You jam that in there, and that will hold it in place, but still allow you to slide it up and down your line. You can fish it somewhere between two inches, and in about half an inch away from your hook. That's up to you. Experiment with it though. Terrell's running the minnow. I'm running the roll bag bead combo. If I start to do better, he'll switch, vice versa. Keep an open mind, experiment, have a variety of baits. You'll have success too. Fish. Yeah! Oh, I'm frozen. I can't even hold the rod. I'm so cold. I was like, I could not feel a thing. <laughs> ooh, ooh, something's pulling drag. Okay, Terrell, you gotta remember we're going backwards with yeah. a really good clip. The yeah. wind's pushing it backwards, and if the fish goes up, it's going to hold your ground. Okay. You put too much pressure on it. Bingo. Yep, good chance you can pop that hook right out. Safety definitely is something to keep in mind Yay! here. I'm wearing a full Yay! body flotation suit. Tara has his life jacket on. The water temperature is 32 degrees. Too little heavier. Gotta be careful. So we're going to work as a team here. Oh yeah, that's a good fish, buddy. That's you a take good your fish. time, Woo! take your time. <laughs> that's it. Big iceberg coming at us. We're going to try to put the stick in the net. Don't pull too hard. Just let them glide over. A little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Got him! Yeah! yeah. That's it! <laughs> yeah! Nice, yeah, money. Dude. Oh my goodness. What an amazing fish. When you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. Never forget the bottom when you're at the top, baby. That's awesome. Nice work, Carol. Thank you. Persistence, baby. Yeah, man. It's all good, game over. Woo! It's raining man and baby blue. It's raining man, hallelujah. Life is good, baby. Excuse Let's me. Let's do this. Excuse me. Can we do subtitles when Tarot talks? <laughs> more fish, more problems, better than no fish, no problems. Respect the grind! Do the steelhead shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> Trout people, they're weird. Thank you, Minkota, for making the best trolling water I have ever used. Is that, is that subtle? Killer life. It's weird, a lot of people won't understand that. I don't know if I should be even telling. <laughs> oh God, nation! Killer life, yeah.